those who know good bespoke suits are surely familiar with this humble shop in Sim Sa Choi. As simple as it may look like from the outside, this shop has welcomed the world's rich and famous. Well, for Michael Jackson, Prince, um, George W. Bush, Meghan Markle, now the Duchess of Sussex, Hillary Clinton, and Bruno Mars. Let's know more about Sam's Taylor as we welcome our guest for tonight. He's the third generation proprietor of Sam's Taylor and the most sought after guy in Hong Kong. Let's welcome Roshan Malwani. Good evening, Roshan. Hi. I'm very excited to do this talk show with you. I'm super excited as well. Okay, first of all, we talk about the business itself, mm -hmm. Sam's Taylor, the history of the family business. Mm -hmm. I know it, it's been going on since 1957. Mm -hmm. I'll let you do the introduction. Um, well, from what I'm told, my grandfather moved to Hong Kong in 1952, mm -hmm. um, worked for five years, and then he, he made enough money to open up Sam's Taylor in 1957, and then bring my grandmother, my father, my aunt, and my uncle to Hong Kong. Mm. Um, my father joined him pretty much immediately. Uh, He's living proof of child labor in China, just like me. Um, he started very young, and uh, he really took the bull by the horns, even right. as far back as 1957, and made Sam Taylor what it is today. And now we're 62 years strong. I joined the business. This is my 20th year. I joined the business in the year 2000, and uh, I'm happy to have had the opportunity to add on to what was already a great legacy. Right. Appreciating a good suit from a man's perspective, what can you say about it? Because a man can be happy with a watch, a belt, and a suit. I wear a suit every day, six days a week. Monday to Saturday, I dress in a suit. And at least one day a week, I'll go home, shower, and put on another suit or a tuxedo. A suit is like your shield. Um, it's like your Superman uniform or your Batman costume, whatever you want it to be. People just treat you differently when you're wearing a suit, and that's the bottom line. I walk the streets of Chim Sa Choi or Central or somewhere in Hong Kong every day mm -hmm. and I truly feel like Batman or Superman. I feel as though the crowd parts for me. And I think that's the case when you wear a great suit everywhere. You walk into a bank, you get to the front of the line faster. Right. You walk into a restaurant, mm -hmm. you're going to get better service. You walk into a hotel, people come and greet you and want to look after you. Mm -hmm. It's sort of that, 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 that garment that just elevates you. Yes. You, know, you know what I'm saying? And right. it's, it, it, we're defined by how we look, what we wear, how we project ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I think a suit helps us look better mm -hmm. and project ourselves excellently. Okay, describe a good suit. We have a sample here. Yes. And uh, can you describe this and like how is it made and how long did it take you guys? This suit took to me one day one. to make. A or day? Less, or less than one day. Right. Okay, um, this suit is very special. It's a gorgeous royal shocking blue it's a mohair fabric so it's a mix of wool and silk it's only one button which mm -hmm. is not classic um everywhere you go you generally get two button suits but i i believe in one button right i think uh that's my signature style right. that's not something i push on everyone but it's something that i wear and if i'm asked to recommend something mm -hmm. specific then i like a one button it's always um, one button well most guys are uncomfortable wearing the classic. second button it's a classic well i mean what's <sighs> The, the lines between classic, traditional, contemporary, they're so blurred nowadays. Mm -hmm. And the great part about the business that I'm in, the great part of the product and the service that I provide, is that all these adjectives, all these brackets, all these boxes, they can go out the window. I can make you what you want, and I'm going to make you look great no matter what. So if you're not going to button the second button, and if I mm -hmm. have two buttons on a jacket, I'll button both. If I have three buttons, I'll probably button all three. But most guys are uncomfortable buttoning their second button. So I say, you know, let's just toss it out. What do you need it for? If you mm -hmm. don't believe in buttoning it, or you don't have the belief or the skill set or the confidence to button that second button, let's toss it out. Let me make you one button suits. And they work great. And this is very flexible. I love the lining, though. The lining is gorgeous. Um, the lining is something for the individual, OK? Nobody needs to see it. Nobody's going to see it unless you want them to see it. I'm wearing something pretty flash. It's a. Uh, nice and orange. Maybe we'll take a look at it uh, later. Um, but it's for me, uh, it, projected my, it projects my mood at the time that I chose it, okay. uh, which I guess was playful uh, and slightly edgy. Mm -hmm. And I think that when someone's wearing a suit, they're wearing it for a specific reason. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, unlike myself, most of the time they're wearing it to cover things up, right. to project themselves in a certain way. Mm -hmm. to perform in a certain way, to enable them to perform in a certain way, to live up to something mm -hmm. that they have to you live up to. You are what you wear anyways. I am 
everybody's what they were, uh, and, and it is what it is. So the learning inside is it's your opportunity to be playful, to be mm -hmm. different, mm -hmm. to just give you a spark before you're putting it on. Right. Okay, so walk us through. For example, I'm a customer, mm -hmm. and I want to I wanna have a customized suit, so I just need to go to the shop? You and then just need I to. have to choose everything? I can help you do everything. So you can be, you can give me as, you can push the envelope in every ways, or you can let me push it for you. I don't mind, mm -hmm. okay? What I would do, regardless, is ask you questions. It could be a few, mm -hmm. and you give me great answers, or your answers are very long, or it could be many, because I'm What not, are the typical questions? So first of all, what are you wearing in your wardrobe already? What color are your suits? Right. How many suits do you have? What colors are there? Are you, how often are you wearing a suit? What are you using them for? Pretty basic questions, okay? Mm -hmm. And as with any, any job, the longer you're working, the more experience you have, the more you just get stuff faster. So right. I'm already building you in my mind. Mm -hmm. um, it, just, it just happens. I can't, I can't define how it is. You answer a question, sort of something is building up in my head right. ab about you. And I'm just sort of projecting, projecting, projecting based on your answers. And after a few questions, two, three, four, five, six, voila, I bring out a bunch of fabrics, okay? Yes. And I start telling people, this is what I like for you. This is what I'm seeing for it you. Depends on the weather. This, is, this is what I think is going to be good for you based on what you're telling me. Okay, and then they're going to identify to me what they like from the half a dozen or, or more so things that I picked out. Mm. We'll cut that in half. I'll put the fabrics on them. I'm very happy when people shop with their partner uh, or their friend, but more over their partner because if they've chosen someone as their partner, then it's important what their partner thinks. Right. So I like a partner along to, to, to give them some good advice, yeah, you know what I mean? And, and we narrow down the fabric to one or two or three, depending on how many suits uh, they want to get. I prefer people starting with one uh, because I know I can make them many more very quickly. Sure. But I want, to, I want them to trust me. I want to own their trust in every ways through that first suit that I make mm -hmm. up. And then the rest is easier. Mm -hmm. The rest is not easy necessarily for me. I don't want things to be easy for me. I like putting hurdles in front of myself because I want to earn every moment in my life. Mm -hmm. I like jumping over hurdles. When I say easy, I mean easier for them. Easier for them to trust me. Right. To see that I am giving them great this advice. This is the most important thing as a customer, yeah. as a client. So, so if, especially if they're out to buying two, three, four, five, six suits. I'm like, look, take it easy. You know, we've been here for 62 years. I want to be here for at least another 62 or six or two. Yeah. I'm not going anywhere. You start with one suit, see how it is, see what I do for you, and the rest is going to be smooth sailing. Mm -hmm. And the fantastic part here, if you check it, is there's a name on the other side. Yep. There's a there's name. A name on, on that yeah, side. Yes, but we're, gonna uh, we're not going to show suit. the name of that <laughs> okay. person. <laughs> we'll show the name inside okay, my yeah, jacket. Yeah, you could do, we could check that. I'm, so. I'm scared about your mic, though. So that's but like my name is this side, um, and here's my lining. And it says, especially made for Roshan Malwani. And it has so a serial number, name, right? And it has a, a unique serial number um, that we, we give to every client. And when you want to get back in touch with us, all you got to right. do is shoot a photo of that number, send it to us through email, WhatsApp, Instagram, Facebook, you name it, mm -hmm. or bring it along with you when you're, it's your next visit to our atelier. And tell us more about your clients. First, I want to I wanna emphasize that, because I've been hearing it a lot, mm -hmm. like there are people, especially from the West, from the States, they decide to fly to Hong Kong mm -hmm. to go to your shop instead of buy, say, Prada or Versace because they said it's so much better. 20 years ago, I read an article when I first joined my father's business. And the same article, <clears throat> not the same article, but the similar article has been written year after year by major publications, whether it be the South China Morning Post, the Times of London, the LA or the New York Times. Mm -hmm. Fly to Hong Kong, stay at the Mandarin Oriental, and buy a suit. It's cheaper than buying one yes. back on buy a suit at Sam's Taylor, excuse me. Right. Um, yes, so let's flip it around, okay? This is what I tell my team over and over again. When someone comes to Hong Kong and they're here for two days, Mm -hmm. They will come to Samsula three times. When someone right. comes to Hong Kong and they're here for three days, they will come to Samsula four times. When someone comes to Hong Kong for four days, mm -hmm. they will come to Samsula five times, etc., etc. So, no matter how good an experience they have the, at the Big Buddha, no matter how good an experience they have at the peak, if sure. we screw up their suit, of course, they're gonna ruin. It, totally, it's gonna ruin totally. their trip. Okay. So this, this was a mantra that I spewed for my fir first, say, decade and a half um, to my team because what you're saying is the truth. People make a trip 
to Hong Kong mm -hmm. to buy a suit from Sam Sailor. We understand how important that trip is. And no matter what they're doing, ultimately what brought them to our great city was itself. to buy this suit. This suit better rock. We better sure. knock it out of the park. Believe and me. so we're your perfect foil. Um, we get it done all the time. That's true. Okay, let's talk about the, the VIPs, the mm -hmm. clients. Tell us more about it. We're going to start with Bruno Mars. Because okay. I saw a photo of that on Instagram. Uh, we're showing the photo on the screen now. Okay. How was the experience with Bruno so Mars? I, I, uh, you know, it's different with everybody. You're asking about Bruno Mars specifically. My dad was the front guy on that uh, okay. because he was a megastar. Uh, he was staying at the Ritz-Carlton, I believe, if memory doesn't escape me. And I was sort of just in the background for most of the process. And I would say at the time that me personally, I didn't know how huge a star he was. Oh, and wow. I don't think that he had exploded the way he has now. At the time, at right? The time. At the time. Yeah, I mean, I think he was still a big star. Otherwise, the organization that flew him out mm -hmm. wouldn't have flown him sure. out. But I, you know, I'm being honest, I didn't realize the magnitude of who he was or what he was. I'd seen a couple of videos of his and I wasn't uh, blown away. I am totally blown away by Bruno Mars now. And that's not because he made clothes for me. I just think his evolution is magnanimous in every way. Mm. I mean, he's just pierced right. every genre uh, out there. And, you know, I take my hat off to him and I'm just so glad that we got an opportunity to work with him. And I think on one Super Bowl, I think Bruno Blanc has played one Super Bowl. Pepsi, the, yes, that was some uh, 2017, if I'm not mistaken. And I think the year before, this other rock band um, uh, played the Super Bowl. And uh, I, I, I did a, a post on Facebook. This is pre-Insta. I did a post on Facebook, uh, split screen. Um, Bruno Mars and this other rock band, I can't, can't remember their name, right. but they were the best band in the world at that time, um, having performed back-to-back -back Super Bowls and both being Sam Taylor clients. So it was pretty awesome. Talking about VIPs, I could talk about them all day long. Do you get starstruck? Um, at times, <laughs> it depends on who it is. Mm -hmm. It depends on who it is, but you know, my business is not just about VIPs, it's about people. people. And I think that if we didn't make people happy, if we didn't make everybody happy, mm -hmm. then A-list celebrities wouldn't find us such a safe haven, mm -hmm. wouldn't find us such a draw. You, you get what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. it doesn't start, I, don't, I do not think it starts at the top. I think it starts everywhere. It starts at, with making everybody happy. And if you're making all your clients happy, then you are going to draw an A-list crowd. That's not our motivation. That's not what we set out to do. Mm. It's a byproduct of what we do, which is making clients from all over the world happy every single day How and do having done feel, so for decades. Right. How do you feel whenever you see like celebrities posting photos online and tagging you guys? I feel very humble because I, I, I mean, you've got to understand, I think, I think what escapes many people is these people make 20 million US dollars per project. Do you understand what I'm saying? They can buy anything, anywhere. anywhere. They don't need me, whatever. So if they are plugging me, okay, if they are tagging me or, or calling out my name on TV on, on, on Jimmy Fallon or Jimmy Kimmel or, or, or on Stars or on Vanity Fair, then it's, yes, it's about the product, but it's also about the connection. The trust. Because, they, I mean, they have everything already. Do you For understand sure. what I'm saying? So if I didn't leave a mark on them, if I didn't connect with them in the you know, two or three meetings that I had with them, mm -hmm. then I don't think they would have remembered me. Yes, it's about the product, but, and, but it's about everything. And that's mm -hmm. what we put into our stuff. We put in a little bit of us, a little bit of you, and the raw materials itself. What do you think makes you separate from the rest? I don't know. Um, and I don't think about it. I always get asked, what about my competition? What about other people? Yes. What about people down the street? What about the people next door? I don't know. Because for me, ignorance is bliss. I don't <laughs> want to waste my time thinking about other people, no matter how silly that may sound. I want to waste my time thinking about my clients and only about my clients. Mm -hmm. I don't want to think about where they're coming from, when they're coming, who's coming. Who's coming? If you walk through the door, I am yours. That's all I want to do. I want to give my energy to you, not waste it on stuff that I cannot control. Okay? I want to give you my energy. Mm -hmm. And once I do that, I will succeed. You will love me, you will love my product, and success will be success. So I don't think about other people, I just think about what I can do for you. Mm -hmm. You're the third generation. But having said that, you first studied in New York, mm -hmm. and then you decided to come back to Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. Was it something that you've been wanting to do, or you feel like you have the responsibility to inherit the family business? I didn't know at the time, and I've, I think this is the question 
that I'm asked <laughs> the most nearly every day of my life, even before I joined my family business. Um, I don't know why I joined. Um, I never thought about it. It's something that just sort of happened, but it's never something that I didn't think would not happen. I think oh, it's really? just about timing. You have to understand, if when my son, when my children walk into my shop, they're looking up <laughs> and they're seeing so many people. So many photos, every so day. many people. Okay, and they're seeing stars as well. Sigoni Weaver was in my shop once, and she's come many times. She's an Oscar winning actress, Ghostbusters, right. Aliens. And before I say the next thing, my kids were in my store one day. They came back after school and they see Sigoni Weaver. And I go to them, kids, do you know who this wonderful woman is? And they look up to her and they're like, Avatar. And I was Aww. like, awesome. You know what I mean? So she's someone who transcends generations. And I look at Sigourney Weaver, I think Ghostbusters and Aliens. My kids see her for the first time. My kids are Avatar. so young, they think Avatar. Russell Crowe was in my store. Yes, right? I saw it For me, one. he's the gladiator, OK? My son walked in. Uh, fresh off a plane from Singapore, and I go, I go to him, I said, do you know who this great man is? And he goes, yes, Superman's papa, because right. Russell Crowe played Jor-El. Right. And that escaped sure. me completely. So it was sort of the same thing for me. As a, as, a, as a boy, as a child, I just see amazing people, whether it was Stephen Henry, the world snooker champion, or photos of my father with the Queen of England, which was right. just insane. Um, so I, I don't think that this is something that I, I I could ever walk away from, would want to ever walk away from. It was just something sort of there. It's a big responsibility. Yeah. And it's, so it's just about timing. And I went to university. I came back. I worked in Hong Kong. I had a great job. I moved to London. I worked there. And then it was just time. Uh, and, and I think it was the right time. I was 23 years old. And uh, you know, the rest is history. And you treat Hong Kong as your home now. Hong Kong's definitely my home. Big fan of Hong Kong. I think it's an amazing city. I've been very fortunate to have studied in New York, having gone to NYU, mm -hmm. to have worked in London and in central London and lived not too far from it, to visit a great city like Macau all the time, <laughs> but to live and work in Hong Kong, which I think is an extremely progressive city, an autonomous city, and one that keeps moving forward and evol evolving on its own. Right. If you don't manage the business, what do you think, or what pro profession do you think you are in? You think you're going to be like I a think doctor? I would, or... No, I would be a marketing guy, oh. I think. I think I think one of the mistakes that I made was following my contemporaries, my peers at the time that I was in university and right. studied finance. And because I just think that's the way the world was, bankers were heralded. I would have sold my soul, given my kidneys, <laughs> my, 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 my limbs, my digits to work at Goldman Sachs or JP Morgan or, or, or Bear Stearns, which doesn't mm -hmm. exist um, uh, anymore. Um, but that's the era that we lived in. Okay, and I graduated in 98 and I went to school in 95, so mm -hmm. things were different then. What I really enjoyed most was, was probably marketing, like making up crazy stuff to sell crazy things. You do an excellent job. Things. Yes. You do an excellent <laughs> I didn't job. Realize I'm that telling then. you. I didn't, I didn't realize that then. Uh. So, so, yeah, I mean, if I, I, I think it took me a long time to realize that that's what I would have done. Mm -hmm. uh, what I could have done, what I perhaps should have done, uh, instead of studying what I did. But saying that, I never went into finance. I never went into banking. I, I, I did great work uh, after university. I worked in an amazing law firm after I graduated doing cutting edge telecoms conspiracy and anti piracy work. I then moved to London and I worked for an online, uh, no, I worked for a personal concierge company. Oh, wow. Um, which was trying to imitate Centurion at the time. And it, there was nothing else like it except for Centurion. And then I moved on to an online auction site, which was trying to imitate. Um, something out of the United States, I can't remember what it was called though. Okay. Um, the first ever auction site, uh, I think it was eBay, yeah. Right, uh, oh wow. And this was oh. when in internet penetration in the United Kingdom was like in single digits or, or, or less. So yeah, I had really exciting jobs that set me up uh, for what I started to do at Sam Taylor. Mm. And then you went back to Hong Kong and worked with your father. I worked with my father, alongside my father, for my father, how's it, how's, <laughs> it, father. how's the experience working with your father? Do you guys disagree a lot? On everything. Can you describe how it goes? Because I'm, I'm so very I think, curious. I think the dynamics of family business, uh, especially in Asian family business and Indian family business and Indian family business based in Hong Kong, mm -hmm. um, it's very different from any sort of other <laughs> industry or company or normal business practice. I could spend I've spent an hour and 45 minutes mm -hmm. giving a talk 
just on this. I've spent an hour and 30 minutes giving a talk just on this. So I wouldn't even know where to begin uh, and how to describe. What I will tell you is this. It's been an honor, an absolute privilege uh, to work with my father. It hasn't been easy. Mm -hmm. It's been very difficult. And every day it's pretty nasty and troublesome, it, just irritating. Like. Nothing makes sense. It's a roller coaster business. of emotion. It, yeah, it's all emotional. You know what I mean, you know, I just want to work. You know what I mean, I've gone to a stage where, like, come on, let's leave emotion at the door and I wish, let's it's just get the job done. We have the same goal, right? But saying that, you know, a lot of people don't get to do what I do, which is to work side by side with their father seven days a week for 20 years. I'm very hands on, so is he. Um, and we're all of this in each other's faces. I think, I think I, the relationship has been tumultuous, but ultimately we've both drag Sam Taylor along year after year to where it is. Mm -hmm. He has his strengths and weaknesses, I have my strengths and weaknesses. What I will say honestly, and it's so cliched, we complement each other. I don't know if compliment is the right word. I think we fill in well for where right. each other fails. Mm -hmm. That's and what we do. It's the, the Rashawn Milwani era now, I believe. I don't know if I want to call it that. I don't know if it is that. That's for the public to decide. Right. Okay. I think my father. But are you having a hard time with the transition, like to give your own touch, personal no, touch? No, not at all. I think I've had such an easy time. Um, look, there are obstacles everywhere, and I spoke about hurdles earlier. And nothing I do gets a seal of approval immediately. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I've learned how to get away with what I want to. I've learned how to implement what I want done. I'm not a screaming, crying, kicking 23-year-old anymore. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm a 42-year-old who has a family of his own. I'm a 42-year-old who has a great following of clients. I need to get stuff done. I, my, my ultimate goal is to make my clients happy. My ultimate goal is to keep my business alive. Okay? I believe if I can survive, I will thrive. So I get my stuff done, regardless of who's hovering above my head. And ultimately, the only thing to get done is to make my clients happy. If I make my clients happy, Everything else is golden. That's perfect. And you have three beautiful kids. Yes. Do you wish or expect one of your children to run the business in the future? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, another question I get asked always. You know, if my, my, my oldest is 10, if mm -hmm. in 10 years' time we're still alive, uh, as in Sam Sailor, if we're still around, if we're still relevant, we'll revisit that. For now, it's their time to enjoy themselves to grow, to experience the world, to become the people they are, to, they're going to be. And if I'm around in 10 years' time, I'm only going to be 52. I think that's still young. Oh, wow. Uh, you don't so, look 52 at all. Well, I'm 42 now. <laughs> oh, yeah, 42. You don't look 42 at all. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. It's up to my children, right? The, the great part is it's a family business, so it's always going to be theirs. Um, the important thing to learn is, is that when you're give, given a great gift, you don't screw it up. You don't mess up. You've got to work hard. You've got to be disciplined. If there's one thing I've learned from my father and uncle, it's discipline. And I'm super disciplined and I apply that to every part of my life. And my clients can see that. Especially time. Because Especially time. 24-hour time suits. Yeah, 24-hour suits. You've got a guy working 17 hours a day. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the manpower. And I believe this is the investment of the business itself. Mm -hmm. There are 50 people, yes. right, working for you. And um, are they like Chinese? Okay. So I have nearly 60 Chinese tailors. 60. Okay. Not all of them are full time. Okay. We have a very flexible uh, working hour system, which encourages younger people to work with us while they want to pursue other studies or activities. Older people, semi-retired, to work with us, work on, work on stuff when they want to. Um, Women who are raising families. I'm trying to choose my words carefully because we live in a very funny era, okay? Yeah. Where, you know, I don't want to get caught out for labeling people, but we have women who work for us who want to look after their families but also contribute. And then we have men who are working for us full time uh, and stuff. So we have a very flexible working hour system. But what we've got to respect is that you need a specific skill set to make something look this good. Okay, you need a specific, very, are very the specific, yes, of the business, very specific right. skill set to create something like this, especially in 24 hours. So you've got to be very flexible with people's needs and desires. And there's such few people around who can make stuff like this. I want them all to work for me. Okay, so I cajole yes. everyone to doing stuff for me. So we've got 60 of those, and I've got 20 cracking consultants. My, my tailors are all Chinese, oh, wow. my consultants are Filipino. Mm -hmm. Nepalese, uh, Indian, and Chinese. Um, 
and that mix helps us communicate with all our clients. Uh, I think it makes us very welcoming and friendly as well. That's really nice. And how do you manage your time as how a father? How do I manage my time as, as a father? I'm as a very father, involved in my as children. a partner. So as a father, I, I, think every, I think the early bird catches the worm. <laughs> and, and, and that is a, a, a saying, a cliche, I don't know what it's, it is, a, 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 that is that, that's run for centuries, and it's the truth. I learned after my first child was born that if I wanted everything, and if I wanted to do everything, then I really need to be the, the guy who wakes up before everybody else. So I'm the guy who wakes up before anybody's awake. Wow. So I speak to my clients from all over the world before they sleep. I answer all my emails before any of my team is thinking about getting up. I get my workout in, uh, <laughs> and then I hang with my kids. I have breakfast with them. I take them to school, and then I take a shower and go to work. Is it and a hard I, time juggling? No, I mean like, I don't think anything. I, I, I think to, to, to thrive the way I am, um, I think to have such an amazing life, uh, which is what I have. I mean, how can it be hard? You've got to just uh, <laughs> you got to be well, thankful all the time. I mean, you can't think about hard things. <laughs> hard work. Hard work leads to great things. I mean, you can't get anything easy in life, and you get something easy in life, and you're always going to be, you're going to feel you're lacking something. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I don't feel I'm lacking anything. I feel I've earned everything that I have, and it's the greatest feeling ever. I can't even tell you how good it feels. And you might want to pass it to your kids, for uh, sure. I, I think it's something that they need to decide for themselves. I don't want to impose anything on them. I just want them to be good, work hard. You know, I'll tell you something honestly. When I was young, I couldn't understand patrons of the arts. I didn't understand why people would take out their own money to support artists, okay? I was very young, very naive. Now, all I do is want to support the arts. Um, so I want my kids to, 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 to dance, to sing, to perform, to act, to paint, to write, to do whatever they want, to, to, to play sports, to do something fun, mm -hmm. to discover who they are. The business can come later. The business right. can come much later. The business is not going anywhere. You know what I mean? Knock on wood. Let's hope I don't do anything wrong. So I, I think more than what they want to do it's more about what i can do to keep this going long enough for them to decide whether they want to take an interest in it or not in it or not okay for the last topic you're very hands-on on social media yes you handle the instagram uh, the yes. facebook how important is social media it's in this mega business? important it's mega important and this is the reason why okay i don't have david beckham <laughs> okay i don't have tiger woods I don't have 7 million US to give to anybody. I don't have 7,000 US to give to anybody. I only have me. I have me. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I gotta, I gotta be the living persona of this brand. So that's why I do everything. I'm so involved, um, so with it. Uh, and that's pretty much it. And, and social media is the brand new frontier. It just is. You don't need a website anymore. You know what I mean? You just put your stuff on Google, it's, it's like a free website. Instagram is a free website. You know, people talk about website. I, got, I got, had a gentleman tell me off a couple of weeks ago, okay, and he's like, I, didn't, I couldn't find this on your website, blah, 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 blah. And I just, I told him, you know, honestly, there's so much out there, and I do everything myself, mm -hmm. and I generally believe websites are now extinct. They're just more of like a <laughs> shop window, okay? Everybody else has migrated onto other platforms, other platforms which let you furnish content. Mm -hmm. And content is king. I believe Bill Gates wrote that long ago. Content is king. And all my content is my content driven by me and it's all about my clients it's all it's not about me it's mm -hmm. real live stuff the people in my store every single day they are my content right. and that all goes up and only i can capture that i can't outsource that everything you see about us is real just everything you phone. see about us is a living testimonial you know whether it be a photo or a video or right. someone's write up on tripadvisor or google so yes social media is huge because it's a free window to the world these companies who take such a bad rap are giving you, are giving businesses like mine a massive free advertising window to the world, a portal for people to see us. So yes, it's huge. And yes, my responsibility is massive. I've got to manage that portal. I've got to manage that, 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 that window. I've got to put stuff out there that's great for people to see. And there's nothing better than the truth. There's nothing better than reality. So, I mean, if I'm just making clients happy, they're doing all the work for me. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, the photos are real, it's of them. The videos are, are real, it's of their testimonials. The write-ups are real, they're writing it right. up, not me. So, I, you know, everything ties in together. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have the very last question, you I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're running, it's running out of time, it's such a shame. It's such a shame, really running out of time. But the secret to success yes. from Roshan Milwani. Get up early, get everything done. 
eat your vegetables, eat your protein, exercise, do great things, you know what I mean? You don't have to set yourself goals, but aspire to be someone that's great. It doesn't matter if you fall short. Who cares, who's watching except for you? But don't walk around saying that the world owes you something. Be the absolute opposite. Be like what JFK said, you know, don't ask what some, someone or something can do for you. Ask yourself what you can do for somebody. Contribute, do something, be somebody. Mm -hmm. You do all that, even if you fail, the world will come to you. I guarantee you that. Okay, and for all the people out there, audience, uh, how can they reach you? Uh, send me a message on Insta, at Sam Saylor, Facebook. I'm Roshan or Sam Saylor. I'll be the first Roshan that pops up. Um, <laughs> or just Google me, Roshan Mawani or Sam Saylor. It's and simple. They will be t well taken care of. By me personally. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. You're a Thank you so much. I'm so grateful to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Join us again next week for another episode of TDM Talk Show. I'm Carrie D. Kitty.